Greetings. This is a volcano and earthquake watch for April 21st through to April 25th. Strong solar activities over the last 48 hours have produced three coronal mass ejections en route to the Earth, as well as a coronal hole formation's high speed solar wind stream expected to buffer the Earth's magnetic field in the coming days or represent a potential of a seven magnitude earthquake during this watch. We're now looking at the solar trestle activity report via Solon.info, and there are three significant regions of note on the solar corona for this watch, with the main focus of attention being coronal hole formation CH514 located in the northern hemisphere, and it should have its influence on the Earth from April 22 to April 24. There's also another coronal hole formation which is unnumbered at higher latitudes of the northern hemisphere, and it should be of interest over the first few days of this watch. And there's also a developing region above active region 11459. Now this is a large coronal hole formation we can see on the left hand side of the screen and it has developed over the last 24 hours and this may also produce a significant earthquake during this watch. We now look at the latest VSL animated forecast for the next six days and we do see an interesting area of note on the solar corona. There is a small coronal hole formation which is currently unnumbered just above active region 11459. Now this is a significant area of note and it is growing quite rapidly into the northern hemisphere as we can see in these images and I believe this may be indicative of a strong earthquake potential on around April 23 to April 24. Now looking at the VSL forecast in full screen format from a sun's perspective with the earth represented as this black dot rotating across the surface of the sun. Now we do see a lot of movement in this coronal hole formation and this is one of the main areas of focus that I do tend to watch for in terms of an earthquake forecast. So this will be the main area of concern, this large coronal hole formation as it rotates through the earth facing position during this watch. We're now looking at the latest solar wind telemetry from ACE and we see that solar wind speeds are currently flatlining at around 320 kilometers a second but this will change over the next 24 to 36 hours upon the arrival of the high speed solar wind stream coming from coronal hole formation CH514 and this will have its influences on the earth during April 21 to April 24 and this may coincide with a strong earthquake potential as we see solar wind speeds rise possibly to around 550 kilometers a second. We're now looking at the BZ or BZ component of the interplanetary magnetic field where we see readings of minus 7 nanoteslas recorded over the last 6 hours. Now this may be the precursor activity of 3 coronal mass ejections which are expected to hit the Earth's magnetic field over the next 24 to 48 hours. So we may see some significant moves on this surface which may be indicative of a G1 class geomagnetic storm sometime during this watch. We're now looking at the WSA N Little Solar Wind Prediction Animation where we see three coronal mass ejections en route to the Earth and expected the impact of the Earth's magnetic field or deliver a glancing blow on April 21, 22 and 23. But the major rise in solar wind speed should come from the coronal hole formation CH514 and that's expected to have the influence on the Earth over the next 24 hours so we should see a rapid increase in solar wind speeds prior to the arrival of the coronal mass ejections. Now looking at the Northern Hemisphere with the 193 Angstrom and Solar Monitor and focus on this coronal feature which is located 36 to 41 degrees north latitude which may produce a significant earthquake from April 21 to April 22 and I'll plot a map of region I feel will be most at risk for this event for this watch. Now plotting and mapping a region I feel will be most at risk for this significant earthquake based on solar symmetry as best mapped to the Earth and my number one area of concern is off the east coast of Honshu, Japan, stretching up towards Hokkaido, Japan for April 21 to April 22 for a possible 6.2 magnitude earthquake. Now targeting the second of these coronal features on the solar corona as it is developing quite rapidly just above active region 11459 and I feel may produce a 6.5 magnitude earthquake. Now this is spreading just above the equator as seen in the moving imagery and I'll plot a map of region I feel could receive this event now. Now we may get another strong earthquake off the west coast of northern Sumatra during this watch based on some powerful ionospheric anomalies and also this coronal feature mapping this region quite accurately as it moves across the equator into the northern hemisphere which could be an indication of an aftershock for the area. We're now going to look at coronal hole formation CH514 as I do feel the significant earthquake potential of 7 magnitude is possible during this watch. Now this coronal hole has broken up into two separate components. The leading edge is 8 to 13 degrees north latitude and the second component is 19 to 23 degrees north latitude. But I do feel that the main earthquake potential is in the leading edge or the front portion of this coronal hole and this will be the main area of concern for this watch. Now we're going to plot and map this coronal hole formation to the earth and my number one area of concern is the Andaman Islands. 
and my second area of concern is the Nicobar Islands region. The next area of concern would be for Central America, or more specifically, Costa Rica, stretching in towards Nicaragua. And my final area of concern for this possible 7 magnitude earthquake are for the regions of Guam or Mariana Islands. We now look in the global real-time ionospheric map where we see some significant readings of 16 MHz are still being recorded in the northern Sumatra region. Now this is a concern as we did have some powerful readings around 24 hours to 36 hours prior to the large 8 magnitude earthquakes that were recorded on April 11 and we're starting to see some very high readings again in the same areas which is a concern which may be indicative of another strong earthquake potential in these regions so it's definitely worth watching and keeping close notice of during this watch. We're now looking at the Australian Pulsation PC3 index where we see two significant spikes being registered on the Learmonth station over the last 24 hours. Now these are powerful readings and I feel maybe indicative of a strong earthquake potential possibly up towards 7 magnitude during this watch with the most likely areas being north of Australia. And that's my volcano and earthquake watch for April 20, 2012. For more information please visit my website at solarwatcher.net Annotations will be added during and at the end of this video. Thanks for watching.